Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll cover how to get started with the Actarius Excel integration that offers extensive options for analytics and planning with your Actarius database. The first step is to install the add-in and we have two versions, a 32-bit and a 64-bit version. To see what version is relevant for you, just go to File, Account and check the About Excel box um, in your Excel to see which version of Excel you're using. So in my case, it's a 64-bit version. So this means I need the 64-bit add-in. So for that, you just go to the Actaris Modeler, you go to Downloads and to the Excel add-in folder. And there you can download either the 32-bit or the 64-bit Excel version. In my case, it's 64, so I would download this one and install it. Once you've installed it, you will see the add-in in your Excel. And the first step is just to log on with your Ectaris account. So the normal Microsoft or Active Directory account. So you select your account and then you are connected to your Ectaris database with all your relevant read and write access options. So now we are connected. And the first time you connect to an Actaris database, there are a few options. So you can either connect directly to the relational database or you can connect via Power BI. We typically these days recommend to connect via Power BI as this will then give you much better options to maintain your DAX, to potentially also include other sources, to uh, do some transformation that you might need. So Power BI gives you quite a few options, but um, in general, connecting directly to the SQL database, to the Akari SQL database, or connecting to Power BI um, uses the same data source. With Power BI, you get the option to set up your DAX in a simpler way, and you also have a direct query option, which in Excel otherwise is not possible. So um, if you load the data into the Excel data model, which is the other option, so you're connecting the relational data Based to the Excel data model or Power Pivot, as it used to be called. Um, you don't have a direct query option, so this would load the data into the data model in Excel and you can work with this one. Typically, the advantage is that it's much faster because you don't have to go to the server. The disadvantage is if you do planning, this will be a little bit slower because then you have to refresh the data model when you enter data back into Excel. So let's um, do initially the Power BI option. So we can just go to data, get data. And now you see uh, you have an option here, connect to Power BI, we use that one. This will then give you all the data sets that you have access to in Power BI. So you can see I have a long list of options that I can use. So I will use the Ectaris demo, which is one of our standard demos, the demo user here. And now Excel is creating the connection to this Power BI dataset and will give me a pivot table view initially. So here we see now the connected um, tables. We can close this one for the moment. And one thing to keep in mind with um, connecting Excel to a Power BI source, you have to s define explicit measures so that you can use them in the value section. In most of the cases, this is just a simple sum statement where you specify a name and then just use some uh, DAX sum statement and then you put the hectares amount field into the sum, into the sum um, argument. Uh, in some cases this could be a balance or really any DAX statement in Power BI uh, which you can just um, set up and then you will see that in the amount fields in, in Excel. So for example, here now, if we want to use this GL amount, I can just search for it, which is a good practice in any event to work with your data. 
and put this in the values field. Uh, if you don't do this and you try to access the amount field, unfortunately Excel will not allow you to put this into uh, the value area. So this is uh, an issue that um, many new users encounter. So important to set the amount variable as an explicit measure. So for example, with a sum tax argument. And now in the pivot table, we can just add whatever we want. For example, the account name in the rows, the period in the, in the columns. So we typically in the automatically generated dimension, we use a convention for year month that will give you the combination of year and month, which is typically a good good thing to do. So we can see now all the uh, year months combinations here. We can then add, for example, a fiscal year as a filter in, in the pivot table and can then limit this to a particular period, for example, 2019. The other thing that you typically set is the scenario. At the moment, this is a combination of scenarios, which is likely not what you want. So you want to filter on the scenario. Let's put this into our pivot table as well. So now here I can select the scenario. For example, we want to look at budget data. Now we can see our budget data here. And this is all it takes. So the only thing left now, if you want to now enter your budget data, obviously you can define the report as you like, but if you want to enter your budget data now, you can just go to Ectaris, specify you want to allow the write back here. You want to choose the cube to be used here. In our case, this is the uh, GL one. So called finance. And this is it. So now you can immediately start entering the budget data. You obviously have to keep in mind that for the dimensions of the cube that you're not using, this will be a splash. So maybe we uh, add another dimension here to make it a bit less of a splash. So the name for the organization name, for example and filter this to a particular organization. Let's see, we want to do our budget for Australia. And that's it. So now we can immediately start our budgeting with all the Excel features that you have. So let's say for example, I'm planning a marketing collateral here and I want to have this for the first few periods. I can just um, drag this and do my budgeting there. The cool thing is you can also use in a calculation. So you could say, I want to use uh, D13, the one above times 0.12, so plus 20%, um, for example. And then you have uh, the same option here. And once you're finished, you just press commit. And this will send then all your changes back into the Actaris database. So you see now we have now seven changes committed. Now we get the refreshed view. So you see here, this is now because of the precision with the um, with the carry splashing. This looks like um, uh, you know a lot of decimals here, but that's something you can typically address in Power BI. So let's do this quickly and specify for the GL amount that I've done here. I don't want to see any after comma. You could also do just one. And then once you have done this. You just publish it uh, back to Power BI, and then in your report, you will get the correct data. So after refresh, we see now that everything looks okay. Our entries are shown correctly, and um, we also get the right totals. Talking about totals, what is typically useful here is also the option to write back on aggregation. So let's take the account option to enter data on an aggregated level. So let's take here, uh, for example, the account group and drag it into our report. So now we have the account group here as well, but as we can see, the subtotals are not shown or the, the, the group total is not shown. 
that's something you just have to turn on in the pivot table. So I just go to pivot table design, subtotals, and then you can choose either top or bottom. Let's here choose a top. And now we've got the total showing here um, in the report. And here, just I quickly want to demonstrate now how we can enter values on the total. So if the boss, for example, says the expenses in January will likely be higher. So I can now enter here minus 12,000. And then again, if I uh, write this back, I will see that this was distributed to all the underlying accounts based on the existing distribution. Or you can also do relative increases by using the prefix, for example, I 10% would increase this um, by 10%. So this was just a quick overview of the options in the Actarius Excel add-in. For any questions, please contact our support team or watch some of the other training videos.